Mother's Day. Good morning. morning. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Brandis. And thank you, all of the staff, for whatever it is that Spirit has done through you to help create the atmosphere through which an amazing experience will happen through me, through your life, through us today, through a message that God not 
only has designed and given me, but who has sent his special guest who I bring to help me and to speak through me as I just surrender my tongue to it, to him. And as he gives me the unction to speak through an outline that I have, see what I have here is not what you will receive. It's what, what you will receive will be the undertone, what comes under the tongue. And as I speak, I will be speaking in tongues. What that means is that each will hear in his own tongue, in his own language. You get a rose, and you get a rose, and you get a rose. See, that's where Oprah got hers from. <laughs> now, I know that when the few times that I've come in the past, I try to remind you to be in expectation of my next time if I am invited to come again. But what I tell you is to make your guest list, didn't I? And invite someone to come with you who haven't been here for the first time. See, you should tell them there's going to be a man there who is strange. He's unusual. He's just not like anybody else that I've heard. And when he speaks, something happens. When I leave, I'm not the same. And if you come, the same thing will happen for you. You should show up and show out and let your light shine. You should not walk in here by yourself. See, I bring a guest with me every time I come. And he is the Holy Spirit today. He's going to talk to you about several topics in one. The one is, it's all in your mind. Can you say that? It's all in your mind. Now let's change the, your to my. It's all in my mind. One more time. It's all in my mind. I have another topic. And it will be, a rose is a rose. Can you say that? A rose is a rose. And the other one is, what is it for? What is the rose for? And the other one is the parable of the rose. And so the last time I was here, I was speaking on uh, the essence of making a distinction between purpose, God's purpose in your life and your divine destiny. Somebody said, mm-hmm, because you were here. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Well, this is a continuation of that. And before that, I had facilitated a series of weeks on a class, Mental Equivalence, with you. And, uh, and, and, and so my last talk was a continuation of that. So this continues, Mental Equivalence. And now we're talking about Mother's Day, but what does it have to do with Mother's Day? Well, you'll find out. <laughs> this will be a Mother's Day message that you will remember forever. We will recognize, we will honor, we will celebrate, we will move into a, a deeper understanding of mother and mother's recognition in a unique way. Why? Because everything, no matter what it is, has been or will be, has to come through mother. Has to come through mother nature. Has to come through that mother energy. Genesis 5 and 2 says, when God created man, now, I didn't make this up. It's a quote, just like it's written. When God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. Well, if he made him in the likeness of God, going on to say male and female, then God must be male and female. 
this energy, it must be male and female, created he them. So, having the understanding that there is one purpose, as you already know, you don't have a purpose that's different from your purpose. There's only one purpose. We all have the same purpose, but our destinies become different in fulfilling that purpose. What is your purpose? Your purpose is to fulfill God's will for your life. Now, that can be misunderstood because we go back to separation again. God's will and my will. See, and, two. Mm -hmm. God has one will. You have as many as you want. (laughs) God's will is that you fulfill his one purpose through your many, through your free will. And your free will is, becomes your vision, your dream, your aspirations, and whatever it is that you desire. Mark eleven twenty four puts it this way. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever, that's about a billion things, whatever, what so things soever you desire when you pray, believe, that you receive them, and you shall have them. That's your will. And herein lies the beginning of trouble. Right, Brother? That's where it all begins. Your free will. Uh, the prophetess, Ella Fitzgerald. Put it this way. Into each life, what? Some rain, some rain, must not just some, some rain. Well, yeah, into every life, into each, if you were born into this world, it don't matter how spiritual you become, how religious you become, how many doctors you become, how many, whatever, 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 whatever. Mm-hmm. Some rain, what? Must, it must, is gonna fall. But she says, but too much is falling in mine. Into each heart, some tears may, uh, must, must fall. But someday that sun will shine. And so what we're saying, it is how we deal with stuff when it happens, that's important. Stuff is going to happen. The stuff that has brought you in here, because see, we, we come here. See, when you come to new thought, when you come to metaphysics, when you come to a teaching like this, that's the last door you knock on. You done peeped in all the windows. <laughs> and it ain't work. Finally, you come to the realization that if it is to be, it's up to me. I got to do this myself. So teach me how to use my mind because I've tried everything else. The hard truth, though, in this teaching makes some people drop out. And it filters down to a few, right? And that is this. The hard truth that you have to come to the realization of is that 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 you're running from That that you're trying to get rid of, that you're trying to heal, is what you must accept before you can get rid of it. God, do what? Grant me what? The what? The serenity to what? Accept what I'm running from, what I'm trying to get rid of, what I'm trying to change, what I'm trying to heal. You ain't going to heal it until you accept it. Mother Nature gave it to you. Mother Love gave it to you. And then you're going to judge it. The hard truth is accepting the reality that the so-called bad things, the so-called evil, the so-called sickness, the so-called disease, fill in the blank, is exactly that. It's called that because you named it. Right? Say amen. Where's David? 
Is that here today? Uh, hear some noise in the house. <laughs> Make some noise in the house. Uh huh. Last time I was here, uh, 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 at the end of the talk, about a month ago, people were milling around, loving. And I was standing there, and a lady came up to me. She was a senior person. I'm trying to see if I see her. I don't see her in the house today. And um, she said, I, I, I got a lot out of your talk today, but I'm pissed off. <laughs> don't make sure she didn't have no gun, you know what I'm saying? But I'm pissed off. And she said it with power. And I said, I smile. And she said, this teaching, we talk about it's all in your mind. It's all in your mind. How can you say it's all in your mind when you're suffering and when you're experiencing pain and so forth and so on? And I said, I understand. But what she didn't know is that for the last at least two to three years, I have been working on that one question personally for myself and also to be able to teach and help others. I've been focused on that one question. In my teaching, in my workshops, in my speaking in other places, I haven't changed my thing. I've been speaking on that for two to three years, trying to decode it, unlock that, unlock that code. Because the author, the founder of our teaching, uh, New Thought, Phineas Parker Quimby, in the 1850s was experiencing with liver disease, kidney disease, lung disease, all at the same time. In the 1840s and 50s, when there was no place for him to go medically. They had given up on him to die. There was no spiritual healer he could go to. So he opened the New Testament and started reading and studying the teachings of Jesus and discovered that Jesus, what the Christ really meant, the science in your mind, he was healed. And from that, we have many denominations of new thought. And psychology followed that with Freud and all, but that was... Uh, after Quimby. And so I started studying, following the Socratic method. Socrates taught his students to ask questions, ask the questions until the answer come out of the question. So I posed the question, that question, how is it that Quimby was able to manifest healing in the midst of suffering from all these chronic diseases, given up to die, and out of that the discovery came Christ healing in the silence. That's what I'm bringing to you, what I've learned. See, imagination is what I've learned, is the mother of creation. Happy Mother's Day. Everything in life you create through your mother, female nature, and everything that comes out of that female nature that you create has a spiritual significance. Has a spiritual significance. Significance. It has a purpose. It has a meaning. Don't discount it. Don't start uh, 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 recognizing it as an enemy. Something. What? Everything that God creates is good. It is or it ain't. No black and white. There's no in-between. No shades of grays. You can't make the exceptions because it's cancer, because it's diabetes, because it's, it's a heartbreak, because it's a burglary. Because You can't make exceptions. It's all or none. Jesus experimented with the law and discovered, like, Quimby, like Jesus, Quimby saw that Jesus had discovered through experimenting that the Christ that everyone had been looking for before Jesus, they were looking for Christ to come. 2,000 years later, named the denomination and they're sitting in church today talking about the coming Christ. Why are you laughing? 
Because you know your cousin's sitting up there in those churches <laughs> waiting for Christ to come. Jesus discovered that the Christ was waiting for man to use Christ that was already here in him to control conditions and to heal their bodies and to also create whatever it was they desired. But they're waiting for him. Jesus called this discovery the Christ in man, in the heart, soul, mind of humanity. And he began to illustrate this through the teachings of the parable. So today I want you to understand that what you are receiving is science through a parable. I'm creating my own parable. I teach through parables. And it will be the parable of the rose. In a little while, I'm going to take these three roses and pick one here, one here, one here. And I'd like for this rose to circulate through among you. And as you pass this rose from person to person, I want you to enter into your private conversation with God. And I want you to, by the touch of this rose, symbolize that I accept my rose that this rose represents this cancer, this diabetes, this upset, this sense of betrayal and abandon, abandon, abandonment, this, this, this loss, this whatever it is. Accept it. Because it ain't moving until you accept it. What? Grant me the serenity, the peace, the power to accept things. See, you can't change what has already happened. This that you're looking at, that you've given some name to, according to somebody's opinion, professional or otherwise, is not real. That's not what you're accepting. And that's where the fear is. You think you have accepted. I didn't say accept that. Except what I'm going to tell you what this symbolizes and what this represents. Except that is your healing. Not accepting the problem. See? That's why you say you don't think you're going to touch that rose passing on to somebody else. No. That's not what you're accepting. Oh, hold it. You're not accepting the problem, the appearance. You're accepting the lesson that it has come to teach you. That's the healing. Ow! Mm hmm. Jesus demonstrated that Christ in him, the imagination which is the power of consciously directing and controlling thought through the engineering power of the faculty of God that is in your mind, that is a part of what you are, which is your imagination. And Jesus revealed that imagination is simply capturing. Mm, in the stillness. Or sometimes you're just walking. Sometimes, but you'll catch it. It's a vision that you catch. It becomes your divine destiny. See? The desire already exists before it comes to your mind. If you got a desire, it's waiting. It already exists. If you think about it, it already exists. And it's already done. It's already finished waiting to be released into your experience. It has its own plan for manifestation. Wow, the power of imagination. It, it, it draws, it coalesces, it, 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 it orchestrates, it does all the stuff. Matthew 16, 19 puts it this way. I will give you the keys, and that's what you're getting, or the keys, understanding, to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever. Now, don't start separating and qualifying and passing judgment on what you want. That's somebody's opinion. Whether it's good or bad, right or wrong, it's decent or indecent. God don't care about that mess. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Whatever. So that means when you, if it's bound, 
when you change your, when you unbound and unbinded, when you change your perception on earth about what you think you see as being good or bad. See, you can't see it being good and you can't see it being bad. You can't see it being good. You can't. God does not see it as good or evil or he's lying all through the book of Genesis. Is that true? Say amen. amen. Louder. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> good and bad is in your mind. God does not see it as good or bad. Because if you see it in good, then you believe in bad. If you believe it is good, then you believe in evil. It's nothing until you name it. And then after you change your... Of course, the miracles define a miracle as a shift in your perception. And when that perception shifts, you've created a new mental equivalent. And when you create that new mental equivalent, you've set in motion a new trajectory of life's experiences. Automatically, simultaneously, change. And, they, and, and this new tra trajectory begin, begins to express in your life as health and wealth and prosperity and happiness and joy and peace and an abundant life. Ephesians 20, uh, uh, 3.20 puts it this way. Our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think. Isn't that an amazing God? Oh, yeah. See, when you think that you know what you want and ask God for, you're limiting God. And God gives you what you want. Give you what you ask for. That's what you want. <laughs> All you can put in your pocket, buck. Unlimited. God, you tell me what I want. How I don't have the audacity to tell an all wise, all knowing God what I want. Then some people go tell God how to get it. And give it to me this way. <laughs> and this is how I want it. No, 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 no. I'm waiting to, uh, just surprise me. Surprise me. And that's what God does. Matthew chapter 5. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets, Jesus said. I'm not coming here to destroy the law and the prophets. I'm coming to fulfill. But he was arguing. He had to fight. The powers to be. They thought that he was coming to, you know, do away with the old teachings of the prophets. He said, no, y'all just don't know what you're doing. I am come that they might have life in John 10.10. 10. I am come that they might have life and that they might have that more abundantly, you see. And Neville, my, one of my most prominent first line teachers who's been gone for 100 years, <laughs> Neville Goddard in his writings, he said, the abundant life that Christ promised us is ours to experience now, but not until. You want to know what he said after that? Uh -huh. The abundant life that Christ promised us is ours to experience now, but not until we have the sense of Christ as our imagination. He, and then he quoted Colossians 1.26, the mystery. See, when, Je when Jesus came into the world, the Christ was a mystery. But he decoded it, unlocked the, the, the code. He said, the mystery hid from the ages, the Christ that you've been looking to come. Christ in you, the hope of glory, is your imagination. Mozendar, the other uh, major teacher in my life, put it this way. He said, he wrote in this article in 1930. It is the meaning which we give to a word which gives it its power. Otherwise, a word has no power of, of its own. So, you come here today to leave with a different meaning of imagination, right? 
So imagination means something different to you. Let this circulate. Imagination has a different meaning to you than it ever had before. You leave here today empowered with the living Christ in you. Of course, the miracle says, Jesus says, teach not that I died in vain, but teach that I did not die by demonstrating that I live in you. Mm -hmm. All right. So now the science of the parable comes alive in your life. Today, Mother's Day is significant to you because it's a day of healing for you. As you touch this rose and speak silently and to yourself, self, I accept this and whatever it is that you're praying for to get rid of, to heal, running from, unresolved, I accept. But it is not that that you're accepting, not the outer thing, not the pain. It is something behind that because what behind it that you're accepting it, you don't hear coming out of my mouth. Comes out of your soul. It will be a revelation. Ow! Spirit will speak to you and tell you what it's for. Why you drew it to yourself in the very first place. The person who you hold some unforgiveness for is a victim. You made them do whatever they did. You needed them. They fit the right profile at that time to come into your life to do whatever they did. And whatever you did to somebody else, there, you're just a victim. A willing servant. For God's love to come through you in that form, in that action. Except the lesson that it came to teach that person, it came to teach you. I don't know what it is. But it will be shown to you. It will be revealed to you. Thank you, Lord. It came to pass. And this too shall pass. It came. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. It came to pass. Oh, hold on to it. I'm mad. I want my money. That's mine. No. Life is fluid. Let go. Flow. Feeling is the secret. Whatever you're feeling now, whatever you're feeling now, you see, feeling is the secret. Feeling is whatever, whatever you're believing now, it is done unto you as you believe. And belief is the container of your feeling. And whatever you're feeling, whatever you're believing is emanating and radiating out through your imagination. Now your imagination don't know whether it's right or wrong, good or bad. It's going to bring to pass whatever you're imagining, whatever you're believing. And that's love. Love. Working to God's love. Bring it. God don't know that it's nasty and bad and indecent and all that stuff. It's going to bring it to pass. Love is bringing it to pass. So when it comes to you in a form or effect or an experience, it's a rose. A rose is a rose is a rose. And in Thunder of Silence, written by Dr. Goldsmith, Joel Goldsmith, he writes, a rose is a rose. Rose, you are nothing. Rose, I give you your fragrance. Rose, I give you your color. Rose, I give you your beauty. Rose, you have no power. He says that another person uh, in the presence of a rose will start sneezing and coughing. <laughs> Am I right? Because that's what's the meaning of the rose in there, in his mind. But did the rose make the person sneeze? Uh, it's all in your mind. Right? So did the disease make you sick? Did the cancer make you sick? Did the arthritis make you sick? Did the diabetes make you sick? No. You're thinking about it. You're thinking about it and the power you give it. The pain is not in the, in, in the disease or the diagnosis. The pain is in your mind about it. How is it that it affects this person one way and this person another? I remember in the 80s when I was betrayed 
after 10 years of experience in working for L.A. County Department of Hospitals in the, as an accountant. But you see, I forgot. I was betrayed. I was angry. I was depressed. I was upset. I had professional diagnoses such as neurothyroid dermatitis. I had circulatory asthenia. I, give me some domains, names of the stuff. I had it. <laughs> and I couldn't sleep for over a year or two. And I was actually betrayed. It was a real, see, see what I'm saying? <laughs> it was real. And I was mad as hell. And I filed a lawsuit. And I won. It was that real. And I convinced the attorneys and even the psychologists for the county, when I told him about what I was mad about, he said, why, that's a kiss of death. I'm going to do what I can to help you. Now, their psychologists are going to help me. Because I made it real. But I did read the lawsuit. But what happened was, I learned how to meditate. That's when I started, first entered the science of mind, started getting basic classes, learned how to meditate and everything. Had a practitioner, only had one practitioner all my life, and that was one he'd done. We became friends, and then we became collaborators of doing workshops and teachings together. But she counseled me through that thing, prayed with me through that thing, and what came up through me was what I'm teaching. I learned what it's for. When I stopped fighting, the, I never went for a hearing or anything except for one time at the end when, when the year of the process of going through the course, course and things or other, and met, and the attorney came out. He was going to go in and talk to the, to the negotiators or whatever. He went in and he came out. He was gone and he came out. He said, my God, he said, I've never seen anything like this. See, what I'm telling you is what I practice. He said, I've never seen anything like this. I said, what? They said they're throwing in the towel. I said, yeah. <laughs> and then it came to me, that spirit, what I was practicing, what we were doing in the guided meditations was she was seeing what she called da -da -da -da, going into my personal files and da -da -da brownies, she, I think she called them. And anyway, I learned how to meditate. What I closed my meditation with was remembering the story of Judas. Not Judas, Pontius Pilate. Jesus was brought before Pontius Pilate to be judged. And Pontius Pilate said, I find no fault. I find no fault. I don't want to be accused of killing an innocent man. Y'all take him somewhere else. So I said in my meditation to these people who are against me, wash your hands. Wash your hands. The man came out of the office, whoever he was talking to, and said, they're throwing in the towel. You don't need a towel unless your hands are wet. What was revealed to me in my meditation that I had forgotten 10 years earlier from my first job working at Harbor Hospital in Los Angeles County, retired, moving out, retiring at Martin Luther King, was this. My cousins and I, and I'm closing now, my cousins and I were job hoppers when I first came to California. And that was one of my first jobs. And I only went to jobs where there was nobody who looked like me in the 80s, and you know, they, everybody, they needed a token. They needed one of y'all. And I only went to those places, knocking on the door, and was hired every time until I got to Harbor Hospital. What I said, jokingly, didn't know with them, I will only work 10 years. I ain't working for nobody all my life. I'm going to work 10 years, and I'm retired. I'm out of here. 10 years to the month, February 1979. 10 years to the month is when this case was settled. So I created that. I set that up. When that man came to my desk on that day and said to me, young man, the day will come when you will learn that if you don't look out for number one, nobody else will. 
that's because I hadn't filed for this promotion in a timely manner because of my stress that we were on under the job. I'm looking out for him. I'm making him. And that's the way it turned, came back to me. So I took that as betrayal because I had compromised my education. I had given up going to school to work my way up and had gotten to this point waiting for my next uh, promotion, which is going to be assistant to the physical officer. Do you see what I'm saying? That was powerful. Then when he said that, I realized, oh, my God, I've made a mistake. I put the power of my life and the control of my life into some man's hand, and he can do this. I got scared. I got angry. I got depressed. Then all of these diseases and the sicknesses that I told you that I manifested began to drop off one by one, one by one, one by one. You see, because a rose is a rose. Rose you are nothing. Rose, I give you your power. I give you your fragrance. I give you your whatever. You have no power over me. And so that's what you leave here with today. That rose that you touched has caused a transformation in your mind, in your soul, on what you think you've been praying for, or what you think you see is not that. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. And so it is. And so it is. God 
in the center of all things.